The excitement around GLP-1s for weight loss is exploding, with social media flooded by users eager to share their journeys. Journalists are calling GLP-1s among the most important breakthrough drugs ever, as these medications become part of daily life and users learn to incorporate them into their routines. Today, we're talking with Jarvier Mohammed to break down some of the popular TikTok diet trends, what they are, if they work, and what to watch out for. Jarvier is a biomedical scientist with a PhD from the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. There, his research focused on mitochondrial biology in the context of metabolism and cancer. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we're gonna watch some social media videos about diet and GLP-1s and stuff. So the first one is about fast food. Great topic. What do you think about that? Yeah, this doesn't surprise me. I mean, fast food is no stranger to us in the US. It makes up about 60% of our diet. The goal here is that you want to make sure that even if you're seeking out fast food, that you look for options that will supplement your treatment journey. Yeah. So in the video, you see things like she's uh, ordering salad, looked like a veggie burger, maybe. But you want to make sure you're having, you know, a lot of lean protein in your diet. You want to make sure that you're eating healthy fats, more complex carbs, like your vegetables. Even if they're seeking out those types of food, like I said, you want to make sure you're hitting those nutritional goals because the food that you have while you're on a GLP-1 kind of helps you mitigate the side effects that you may be experiencing. Yeah, and I think it's important to mention that fast food depends on how you draw the box around it, right? It could mean quick service meals as much as it means drive through meals. They could be all sorts of different things and it just depends. Yeah, absolutely. So let's move on to another video here. This one is about what they eat in a day. Sure. What I eat in a day on a GLP-1 medication. I started out with some Greek yogurt and a banana. Usually I have oatmeal, but I had cornflakes today. I did use this high protein milk, so I was still hitting my protein goals. I recently started taking these Lemmy probiotic prebiotic gummies. They, for lunch, I decided to make a smoothie. Smoothie is a great way to get a lot of protein and calories in, especially if you add a protein powder. I use this clean, simple eats one. And protein milk, of course. I eat normally the rest of the time. It's just the day after the shot that's a little bit more intense. The only macro I care about on this day is protein. So I have some chicken noodle soup in addition to my smoothie. I had some meatloaf for dinner and I used 80 20 ground beef to make it higher in calories. This day is less about nutrition, more about just like eating enough. And I finished my day with a bottle of Gatorade. There's a lot of information in there. What do you think about that when you watch it? Oh, I mean, I think this person's definitely following like the nutritional goals that we would expect for someone on a GLP-1, but this may not be accessible for everyone, right? Not everyone wants to count the calories, you know, in every meal. There are a ton of, you know, TikTok diets floating around on the internet, and I would say don't take them as prescriptive. Take it as inspiration. GOP ones also make you feel less hungry. And while this may be true for this person, as she said, the day after her shot, this may not be true for everyone. Not everyone would be hungry enough to have several meals a day. This person seems to be making some very specific food choices. Would you call this like a very strict diet? Would you say this is pretty typical? I would say this is definitely on the stricter side. She's opting for high protein milk. She's opting for high calorie and high protein smoothies. So definitely on the stricter side in terms of, you know, counting her calories, making sure she's hitting the nutritional goals, um, hitting all the complex carbs that she needs. She mentions at the end sports drinks. A lot of people gravitate toward those when they need hydration. Is that a good option? Sports drink is a good option for hydration. There's a lot of electrolytes in there that are good for your metabolism. However, I would say approach sports drinks with a bit of caution while you're on a GLP-1 just because they can be high in sugar. And while you're on a GLP-1, you want to watch for spikes in blood sugar. Got it. So maybe a zero sugar option if that's not definitely that's out there. Yeah. Zero sugar is definitely a good option. Cool. Okay. Let's go to another video. And this one is about how much to eat. Like me, your doctor didn't give you any point of reference. Here's a starting point for you when you start Ozempic and Manjaro. Number one, take your body weight multiply it by 12, and those are your baseline calories that you should be eating. Now take that number, subtract 300 to 500, and that should be the calorie intake for a day. Definitely nothing less than 1,400 calories. Two, protein is the only thing that you need to track. 
take 0.5, multiply it by your body weight, and that's the protein intake that you should shoot for every single day. If you just track your protein and you make sure that you hit your protein goals, the rest falls into place and then work from there. Hope this helps. Do you want to start with the calculation? Yeah, the math, I mean, I, I know when it comes to stuff like this, math makes people feel very comfortable. Like there's rules, we can follow those rules and everything. And so some of the math in here, I wanted to know, is this real? Is this is this how it works? So yeah, let's start with the, what was it? Body weight times 12 minus 500. Yes. So I think this is a good rule of thumb, but it's a bit of an oversimplification. Mm. So when you're trying to figure out how many calories you should be taking in in a day, a lot of factors go into that, not just your body weight, right? You want to consider Consider your age, your level of activity, you know, which is different for different people, your height. I would recommend a calculation that takes into account all of these additional factors, perhaps something like from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. They also mentioned protein in the video. Is a protein part of the goal when you're on a GLP-1 diet? Losing muscle mass is definitely a side effect of taking a GLP-1. And so it's important to have a higher protein portion in your diet just to make sure you're supplementing the muscle mass that you may be losing. Day two on Ozempic in Disney World, absolutely zero protein for breakfast, just ate this croissant, which immediately made me nauseous, so I had to chew some gum. This is the only thing I could find in the park right away. A pickle, two Baby Bell cheeses, and a cherry slushie. Um, a couple hours later, grabbed an ice cream, um, grabbed some lunch, which I only ended up eating probably about one of these chicken strips, one tiny bite of the pizza, and about three bites of the salad, but I did eat, drink like four cups of water. Um, grabbed this apple as we were leaving the park, which was 10 out of 10. I did end up eating the whole entire apple. Grabbed this coffee as we were driving home. Um, we picked up Thai food for dinner. So this is like a coconut lemongrass soup uh, with vegetables and iced Thai tea. This is the soup and the pad Thai. And I pretty much only ended up eating just a few bites of each. Did my injection, drank some water and went to bed. Yeah, this is a really important one to talk about. You know, food is at the center of human existence and human culture. We celebrate around it. And even though this person's on a GLP-1, she's still finding ways to snack throughout the day find joy in her food. In my family, when we sit down for lunch, like the conversation over lunch is what we're having for dinner. So this really resonated with me, this video, because yes. when you're at somewhere that you associate with fun and happiness, like you are thinking about, oh, got to get a churro. Like, that's what I want when I'm there. How does this make you feel when you see something like that? Yeah, no, that speaks to me as well. And my family is, is very similar. While GLP-1s can, you know, make you feel less hungry. And so it may take the joy out of food a little bit. It does give you opportunities to form new practices and traditions with your family. Well, thanks for sitting down to talk to us. It was, it was really helpful. I think we can all benefit from those tips. And we've certainly learned a lot about our bodies, making food choices in the real world. And GLP-1s are just one piece of the puzzle and balancing them with smart eating habits and regular exercise is key to maximizing their benefits. A big thanks to Jarvier Muhammad for sharing his expertise and for helping us better understand how GLP-1s can fit into our daily lives. And for those watching, if you've got questions about GLP-1s or ideas of what we should dive into next, make sure you drop them in the comments. We might just tackle them in an upcoming episode. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss our latest episodes. Thanks a lot for watching Shapeshifting. The notion that going to the gym is pointless when on GLP-1 is a myth. The truth is that GLP-1s aren't a magic solution, but there is some amazing science behind the impressive results people are seeing. And exercise plays a crucial complementary role. Understanding that role is key to making GLP-1s work effectively.